unfortunately, too many of us interpreted civil rights as civil privileges. It's not a privilege to go and spend your money with someone other than your own. That's not a privilege, it's a choice, it's a right, if that's what you want to do. But it's not a privilege. We're taught in the book of, I think it's uh, 1 Corinthians, in 10.23 it says everything is permissible but not beneficial. Now my version of that says just because you have the right to do something doesn't mean it's right to do it. So what we ended up doing was committing civil wrongs once we got our civil rights. We started committing civil wrongs against ourselves and started what was the longest boycott in history, black folks boycotting black businesses. And what happened from that? Black businesses went out of business. The man's hotel closed. Do we own a hotel in Cincinnati now? I don't think so. Now, somebody told me that some black group or some black individual bought into one of the hotels. I don't know that. I sure would like to meet them if they have. And that's, and that's commendable. But back then, we had one of the finest hotels in, in, in the country. People would come just to stay in, in, in the man's hotel. And we don't even revere that. We don't remember that. We don't acknowledge that. We don't celebrate that. Yes, it's history, but don't we celebrate black history every month? I mean, every uh, year in February, which I propose that we move that to June. By the way, I'll get into that one day, but uh, to move it to June. Uh, those are the kinds of civil wrongs that we have committed being able or having the ability to go and to sit in somebody else's restaurant, public accommodation was a good fight. We had to fight that fight. We should be allowed to go anywhere we want to go in this country. Like I said, we've been here for 400 years. So that was a necessary fight and, and a proud victory. But just because we had that right to do that didn't mean that we should walk away from our economic base and go yelling and screaming and celebrating because we could give our money to somebody else. That, 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 that's just not even logical. I mean, it makes no sense whatsoever to have done that. But we did it, and now we're suffering from it. Because almost daily, you can look around Cincinnati and see or hear the, the hue and cry of what we don't have and what they do to us and demand this and he won't let us do that and we don't have this and we don't have that. Well, think back about 45 years ago. Go back and start dealing with history from that point on. Just in Cincinnati, the history of black business in Cincinnati. And you may have a different kind of attitude about where we are today. You might start thinking differently about what we need to do today in order to make those changes. So understand that uh, you know, there was a time in this country where black people were very cooperative and collective in, their thinking, in our thinking about uh, uh, economic empowerment. And I would love for us to get back to those days. I would love for us to get back to those days, to relive some of the, the, the things that our relatives did with far fewer resources than we have today and under the worst kinds of circumstances, the worst kinds of circumstances. I was, for Black History of uh, 2007, I celebrated by sharing some time with some of the survivors of the uh, Black Wall Street riot that took place in 1921, uh, in May of 1921. I spent time with six of the survivors out in Oklahoma City. Uh, and, and it was just uh, an honor and a blessing to sit there and talk to them and to hear their stories as they were little children when that happened. But uh, they, they, they actually remember some of the things that took place during that riot where 600 black businesses were completely destroyed, where a whole town was just wiped off the face of the, of the earth. I mean, it was just burned to the ground, everything. People were slaughtered in the streets, shot down like dogs in the streets. I shouldn't even say like dogs because we revere dogs more than we do people, especially black people. So just shot down. And, and, and that was the worst, the worst uh, 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 commission of, of military action or crimes against the people in this country. The worst case of of shooting violence in this country. But yet, when what happened at Virginia Tech, the news people said that that was the worst case of gun violence in the history of this country. Why? Because many of them didn't even know about Tulsa, where some 300 people, as many as they could count, 
300 black folks were killed, slaughtered. They didn't know about it or they didn't want to say that because that, as heinous as that act was, it was suppressed by the media in 1921. Never was talked about, never was published for over 50 years. But those people built that economic enclave, wasn't bothering anybody, said, we just take care of our, we stay on this side of the tracks, you stay on your side, everything will be all right. But some angry white folks said, oh no, they're doing too, too well over there. They're too well off, we gotta go over and tear this up. And they did a good job of it, but it was rebuilt by 1925. But anyway, the, 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 the cooperation that we saw back then was tremendous. And I'll go over some other cases as, uh, as time goes on. But these are the kinds of things that we should be teaching our children. We should be letting them know uh, uh, the, 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 the tremendous progress and strides that our people made long before we got free, long before then. Let them know that. Give them something they can be proud of so they can have a better idea of who they are and who uh, 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 their people were back then.